Good afternoon. It's day two of the Predator World 8-Ball Championships. Coming to you from San Juan, Puerto Rico. We're in the Convention Center. Third floor, the Salon Grand Ballroom, and alongside Napoleon and himself, Marcus Shamat. I'm Jim, Jim White. Marcus, welcome, and uh, you, very familiar with the man in your picture, Ralph Souquet. Oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, I grew up watching him play and play against him, so... Um, so many so many titles underneath his belt obviously now what can you tell me about his opponent conrad you, musician yeah one of the big players from from poland obviously left-handed don't waste too much time and i know he's got a european champion championship title temple under his belt really strong player all the players from Europe, they're just uh, a different breed, aren't they? They yeah. can all play. The thing is about the Polish uh, players, well, they play a lot of eight ball and ten ball back home in Poland, so they're well adapted to that game. And Rolf, I mean, there's no telling how many European championships eight ball he's got. I mean, it's, he tore the eight ball European championships up for years. Uh, and I know he won the World 8 Bull Championships as well. He beat me in the semifinals, so he's got a world title there as well. Yeah, one of only two former champions that are making up the field of 128 players here. Quarter of a million dollars <coughs> up for grabs. 60,000 to the eventual winner. Formidable purse. Oh, yeah. Conrad with a successful break to start his campaign here in the first rack. Shot selections, everything in eight ball. Yeah. Angles are really important. It's just about, not just about playing angles, but stay in line. Now get in line and staying in line is important in eight ball. Realizing where clusters are, the problem balls. Try to remove it the fastest you can. You don't want to leave it for last. Well, Marcus, our colleagues, Tony Robles and Tim DeRoyter playing in this event. And I've, I asked you why you never brought your cue across the Atlantic. You might as well have gone out there and played too. Uh, I have it, but it's not been used the last few months. <laughs> <laughs> that is the problem, <laughs> Jim. Uh, let's see next year. I would love to come to this event and, and play in it. Well, Such a nice venue and it looks like the, the tables are nice and fast. It's a beautiful part of the world, no question about it. The island of Puerto Rico, welcoming all these players and everyone rave reviews, not just the venue, but the hospitality they've received here. Cuisine, terrific. everything about this event from start to finish first class and it's not the only event that's been played we've already had the medallia light puerto rican open 10 ball championship won by carlo biata and that was a few nights ago he captured that his first in the u.s pro billiard series yeah, carlo played amazing in the semi-final and the final in the beginning, he looks like he wasn't in dead stroke, but towards the end, you know, he put himself out there to be one of the ones who's going to win. Well, this long 10 just goes by the eight, Marcus, and mm -hmm. won't have to do anything with the cue ball. So the first rack, it's all on this 10 ball. It's got half a pocket here for Conrad. Nicely done. Yeah, this is a great start. Yeah, he, he break and run out. It was a good wreck. He had to solve some problem on that table, uh, Jim. Uh, we showed that he, you know, capable able player immediately. Yeah, Ralph just helping him put the balls on the table. Gives him a chance to get out of the chair anyway. Stay somewhat loose, but the Kaiser, he's been there, done that, and he's got the T-shirt to prove it. <laughs> Yeah, so many titles underneath this gentleman's uh, 
belt. I mean, he, he's been around so many years now and traveled to all the tournaments still. It's, they should write a book about him. I mean, it's, it's, it's very impressive to do it year after a year in. You know, he's never on a year he never goes on holidays. I asked, I asked him one time, I said, if there's anything I would like you to leave me in your will, Ralph is maybe your frequent flyer, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's as well-traveled as any player that's ever played the game. Both he and Torsten, I think, can boast that. They just they took part in every tournament. Didn't the thing, matter where it was. The thing is, you can take a player on the tour and say, oh, they travel a lot. Doesn't matter. Ralph will beat him in that travel, <laughs> in the miles. <laughs> <laughs> this was an all important break. He made a ball. Not the hardest break so far, but sometimes it's the speed of the, the break, it seems like, and the hit that can make the difference of making one ball or not. And the stripes are nicely posi well, positioned. And it looks like just given that bottom corner where the 13 is guarding that pot from the two, the high numbered balls may be his choice. Yeah, we saw on this main table, the first match of the day, Copigny knocked in a six pack, Marcus. Mm -hmm. Against Torsten Homan, Ralph's countryman. Torsten was ahead three, two. The next time he got out of his chair was to shake hands. That's the best we've seen so far. You get your break working, as Copigny had. You can do some damage. Yeah, I think. I mean, obviously the break is so important. You got to make a ball on the break. Otherwise, you're like a deer inside with lions in a cage. They're going to eat you up. Just a matter of time. Connor making sure he's playing the correct angles. Could be leaving that 13 ball to last. That's one he's going to have to drop onto the eight from. Done. Conrad is. He, was, he plays very fast. One of the faster players on the, on the tour in, in Europe. I remember he one time he ran 125 in in no time. He was finished before everybody on that that day at the European Championships. And he's just got to draw above that two ball. Got into that a little more than intended. Actually, a lot more than intended. He was just drawing back to play the eight in the opposite corner, and now he's going to have to show us a shot. Bottom right corner. Oh, oh that's a great recovery. Had nice to make shot. a good shot to close that one out. Conrad 2-0 ahead of the Kaiser, but not without some anxious moments. All that important lag, uh, Jim. Yeah, true enough, Yeah, Marcus. I think you and me last time we, we commented as well, it was the lag was won by just a hair, and the one who won the lag, and they're breaking and running three wrecks out of the gate. Well, obviously, it's not going to happen every time, but gives you that first first uh, chance at the table to do something. Well, it gives you a chance to put your opponent under some heat, too. But you're right. Contrast in styles between these two. Ralph, much more measured. Assuming we get a look at him, the way Conrad's playing. 
Not so sure, but Ralph much more measured. He'll take his time at the table. German precision when Suke is at the table. Yeah. It's tough to beat an eight ball, I'll tell you that much. I played him a few times. And you better bring your A, a game, otherwise you're going to be looking at that L. That's a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Now ball into the side. Tell you what, Connor is not breaking the hardest of the ones I've seen so far, but it's just the speed of the of the break is really good. He's getting some good action on the. He really boat. is. Yeah. Total disbursement. He's really getting him to pop. And you're right. It isn't always about the speed. The contact's important, and he seems to have found it. Early indications, anyway. He's looking if the 13 goes, is, which is important. Then he can play the 11. Open shot. He almost doesn't have a choice here. Doesn't have a solid that he can make, so he he's forced to go with the higher number balls. He can bank the one. Bank the one. Yeah, just looking at it, he's uh, a young man. <laughs> he's, he's got the game happening. Nice shirt. Young basketball <laughs> player. They've got a basketball tournament on the main level oh, downstairs okay. yeah. for juniors. And we also have the Junior World Nine Ball Championships going on around here, too. Yeah, it's going to be crowned some world championships this week. It's going to be nice. Predator stepping it up big time. Yushin. A little too far, though, from what would have been ideal position. He's got half a pocket on this 13 ball. He's going to be bringing the cue ball up towards the business end where the remaining stripes and eight ball are. But you can see from that overhead camera, that's not a full pocket. Oh, this is tricky. Yeah. Big shot coming up. Made it nicely. Yeah, he's probably going to play the 10 here, and obviously 10, then the 15. He's checking the angle he wants to, to land on that 15. Perfect. Yeah, he's good at straight pool, you know, you figure if you're good at straight pool, a lot of times they, a lot of players say it's equaling to playing eight ball. Marcus, that's exactly what Tony Robles was saying in commentary is the way you see balls in straight pool, very similar to eight ball. People that play good straight pool are going to be very accomplished eight ball players. And you had already told us what a good straight pool player that Conrad was. And this eight into the side pocket for three nil. So as yet, mm. Ralph Suke hasn't got out of his chair other than to help Conrad put the balls on the table for the next rack. Three nothing and counting this from the lag. That's some impressive stuff from Judician here. It's looking really comfortable, I think. Running some, not easy racks at all. We're gonna go for a sh short break and we'll be right back, Jim. Welcome back. It's been all one-way traffic 
in this second round clash. Conrad, musician, he's the one orchestrating a terrific performance in the early going. Break and run, three racks. Won the lag and he has parked Ralph Souquet in his chair. Well, finally, Suke gets to grab his cue and come out. Mm -hmm. And the first dry break of the match from Conrad, and we'll see what Suke can put together. And this is what Rolf looking for, a dry break and opportunity at the, at the table. The maestro, first look at the maestro. Sixty seconds following the break for a player to make his mind up, and then from that point on, it's a thirty-second shot clock. Race to eight. Also pocketing the six ball. And he's got him. He landed good on this four. He wants to get it out of play. Because he doesn't have a pocket except for the side pocket, I think. Oh. A little surprised he didn't shoot the four. I've got to be honest, Marcus. He couldn't have landed better on it. And that is one of the awkward balls for him. And he's missed the three. And that might be nothing more than the result of having spent the first three racks in his chair. So Yushin quickly moving. I think he was surprised seeing a mistake from the maestro. Sure I am. Nicely done. Removing the problem ball there. Yeah, he's knocked one of them into play, and you can see that 15 ball looks like it'll pass that one into the corner pocket. He couldn't get on it any better, so he's going to play it now. Perfect. He landed perfect here, Jim, on his 12. Yeah, drop onto the 10. That's the next difficult ball. Just roll this in slowly. He gets after his difficult areas right away. Yeah. I think that's the key to being successful in eight ball. Yeah. You need, you need to do it to find the solution fast and this shot clock makes you, force you to, to think faster. That was a mistake. He intended the cannon right into that eight. Mm -hmm. And now he's going to have to play the 14 and draw it back. For the 11, yeah. And draw it back and land on the 11. There's no other path to the victory line here. It's all on this shot. He's just going to make sure he misses that four. The cue ball. I wonder if he's going to go underneath it or above it. Throwing it. Whoa. That's not going to turn out any good, is it? Well, he just got there. That's not too bad at all. He's got below the eight. Now he, he can play this and play the eight to the same pocket. Yeah, it looked funny the way he. I don't know if he intended to get there. Watch out, Kubo. Yeah, he's fine. And that miss from Suke, pivotal. Conrad, musician, 4 nothing. 
The miss on the three from Ralph Souquet, bringing Conrad back to the table, and he made no mistake in that last shot. Position from the ball over the pocket to the 11. He'd have been delighted with that. Souquet with a lot to think about, and there can't be many positive thoughts swirling in his head right now. You see Conrad sitting in his chair, feeling pretty good about how things have unfolded. The start of this match, he's halfway to the finish line and the way that he's breaking. You wouldn't bet against him getting closer. Our head referee, John Lehman, he's on the main table using the arrow rack to get the balls together. So they're all an important break from Yushin Conrad. So the dry break again. Yes, another opportunity for Rolf. He'll be happy coming back to the table, aren't you? So quick. Second dry break from Conrad there. Yeah, Ralph's got to get that back arm going. Loosen it up. Get a little table time in. Build up a little bit of confidence, too. Ralph has ran like, uh, what is it, 28 racks or something in, in practicing in April, I think. 20? I think it's tw 28 or something. 28 crazy. racks. I think you're going to ask him later, later on. Worn out a pair of shoes. <laughs> I think it's something crazy like this. You know, like you're standing there practicing eight ball and break and try to run out. That's almost hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we got we to gotta ask the gentleman later. Well, he is a former champion, as you noted, Marcus. Nice opening shot there, redeem himself. Junglin Chang, the other champion that's in attendance here, and he's actually the holder of the world title. Last played in 2012 in Fujiara, United Arab Emirates, where he was crowned the winner. So for 10 years, he's held this crown until Predator decided to stage the World 8 Ball Championships here in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Finally back. It should, it should be a World Championships every year, I think, in 8 Ball or in all the games. And Predator making that happen for all the pool, pool players and all the fans who love to watch this game. And this might be the most played game of all the Q-Sport disciplines, eight balls oh, yeah, played but everywhere. By far. Everybody knows stripes and solids, right? That's like uh, people you, you don't, that doesn't play the game. You say, what do you do for a living? Are oh, you a professional pool player? And they say, oh, that's when you play eight ball. Stripes and solids, and you end up with eight, then, right? <laughs> So it is the most played game of all, the, of all the American pool games. Quick look just to confirm that eight will pass the five into the corner pocket. And this has been. Nice rack for Rolf. Much needed rack win. He can pick him. Sure can pick him, Rob. <laughs> He's a smooth cat, isn't he? Eight finds the bottom of the mm. pocket. And Suke secures his first rack. 
of what he hopes will be a few more to come. And with that one rack, it's 4-1 still to Conrad. We're gonna take another quick break. Chance now to see Ralph Souquet's break, trailing 4-1. He knows that in this game, you put a couple racks together, you can get back in and you can dig into any deficit. So you can't be hanging your head. And Souquet's got all the experience of a multi-time world champion And he understands about living in the present. The ball down, so he's off the mark here. Yeah, he made a good break, making three in the side pocket. That's all he wants, just one ball and dictate uh, this rack. Yeah, Ralph will play the stripes here. Just going through there. The patterns he wants to play them. You know, with 128 players making up the field, and I was looking at some of the second round matchups. You know, Copigny against Homan, and here Ralph against Musician. Tough, tough draws. Tells <laughs> you it get, you know speaks volumes to how tough this field is, the quality of this 128 player field. Mm -hmm. you got to earn this title if you're going to win it, that's for sure, right Jim? It's not going to be given to you. No, you won't be. You'll have to put your shoulder to the front door. You're not going to be back and into this World 8 Ball title. And you better come prepared. It's a long week of pool long time to maintain that high level of focus and concentration I don't know what you were like Marcus but I remember when I played when I played snooker the nights before matches uh, that pillow felt like a brick <laughs> never really slept all that well no it was when you go to tournament you're so excited and, and you know you, you're anxious to just play right it's like that's that's a, that's a sign that you care. You really want to do well in something. This, it's like you have you going for a wedding or something. You're expecting something nice the next day. Well, you're expecting <laughs> something. I don't, know. I don't know whether it's going to be something nice. <laughs> so Ralph here. He needs to run. Yeah, Jim, he's falling on talking the line. to himself. I was surprised he didn't shoot the nine Me first. Me too. That's the second time he's taken a ball that's been a little surprising for me. Shot selection. But again, you never really see the table the way a player does, and sometimes look, our look camera. Look at the kill shot here now, uh, Jim. Look how he killed that ball there, nicely. Huh? Yeah. He well struck. <laughs> Of all that angle, he just killed it. That's a smooth cat for you. That's a, he made it look easy, and he, you know, that's a really tough shot, you know. Well, he got through the rack. It was a good break. Just asking for an extension as he 
pushes the the rake head a little closer to the end of the queue. That's under all the tables. Didn't have to do anything special, just mm -hmm. push the cue ball through the eight. And Ralph secures his second rack, still 4-2. To Conrad Musician. Yeah, we'll have the break in rack number seven. We see them some good eight, but from both players here, uh, Jim. It's solid. They're, yeah, yeah, they know they know their way around the table. We can easily tell. I mean, Conrad made a couple racks that was was not laying easy. Make it look. He made it look easy. Ralph. He has. Uh, Obviously, the pattern's down. The Tourism Puerto Rico, one of the sponsors here, Discover Puerto Rico. And what a holiday spot this beautiful island is. Unbelievable climate. And beat shoveling snow back in Toronto, that's for sure. Speaking of uh, tourism, uh, Ralph brought his uh, wife beautiful wife here <laughs> Ely in the front row yeah yeah we've uh, we were with her at the players meeting yeah oh he made one yeah he's breaking the balls well this time the corner ball went and again Another opportunity. All in the open. It's just a matter of which which you like. Yeah, like picking them off. I One at a time and controlling that cue ball. I think stripes for Ralph. He's got the most easiest opening shot in it. Or he can go solid. The five, I would think. Yeah, he just tried to feather that down. Everything is at this end of the table, the same end of the table as the eight. He's running. Use an extension. Done. Ah. No, you don't want to be on top of that six like this. Oh, he is. That's not ideal position for Ralph. And Conrad is he's calling, calling the ref. He wants the ref on top of this one because he knows Ralph's going to be bridging over the ball. the blue ball let's see if he selects to come for the one or the six yeah you can play the one into the top pocket the long one limit the movement of the cue ball Doesn't have to do anything to drop onto the eight. And this is Ralph Suke answering the bell. He was down four nothing. 
It looked like he was going to get steamrolled. He got one chance. And he has risen to the occasion. Eight down and 4-3 confirmed. Suke just one rack behind now, and he will be breaking. And that's a good time for us to take another short break. We'll be right back with more eight ball action. It is the Predator World 8-Ball Championships, and we are coming to you live from the Convention Center in beautiful San Juan, Puerto Rico. We're in the eighth rack of a second round match. Ralph Suquet, a multi-time world champion, former 8-Ball world champion, up against Conrad Musician from Poland. And Suquet had dropped the first four racks trailing four nothing before he decided to make some inroads and now back to four three successful again off the break and he's given Conrad a little of his own medicine he's parking him in his chair yeah that's not when you want to be against Ralph <laughs> that's the worst place on earth to sit against Ralph on that chair Jim But sometimes you gotta accept it and just wait for your opportunity if you're gonna get one. Well, Ralph's countryman Torsten Homan got parked in his chair for six racks. First match of the day here on day two. Lefty by Ralph here. Look. Nicely done. A nice position to the two. Yeah, Copigny ran out six racks to knock Torsten to the loser's bracket. And all Torsten could do, Marcus, was applaud mm -hmm. when he came out of his chair. Yeah, if you get a good break and you know the patterns well in this game, you can run a, run a lot of racks, I'll tell you that much. I think the family of Karim's daughters are here. On the sideline, watching the games. A lot of crowd is getting close to this TV table now, Jim. Yeah, Sunday mm -hmm. afternoon in San Juan. We've got a basketball tournament happening down on the main level. A lot of kids down there. And of course, we've got the World Junior Nine Ball Championships happening on the tables just on the outskirts of this, the main match arena. Yeah, I went to the induction of, of, uh, of Rolf in the Hall of Fame, and it was an emotional speak he, speech he made, saying that without his wife, he would probably wouldn't continue playing, and, you know, 
he was in bits at that time. I think it was 2017, if I'm not wrong, in Vegas, just before the Moscone Cup. The whole team, our team, the European team, was invited by the BCA to be a part of Ralph's big moment. Yeah, he's one of the special gentlemen on tour that the game has had over the last few decades, ever present in many finals. Give himself angles here. Come across, play the eight in other corner. He's on four. Rack run here. <laughs> yeah, and the comeback will be complete. That's four in a row. Yeah. The first four went to Conrad. The last four have gone to Suke. Ralph in control now of his own destiny. Breaking well. His pace has got a little bit more jump to it. Got to be feeling better about the way this match is unfolding now. Yeah, this is a high, high class match so far. Conrad first, putting three wrecks together. And now, come up Brian to break and leaving the Meister or the Kaiser opportunity and he's running four. He's not the player he was 10, 15 years ago, Marcus, but he's still a handful, isn't he? Mm. It's not like he start, start drooling when you see him and you get, you get him in the draw. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you know, he's, yeah, he's going to be there in your face the you whole time. You know you're in for a battle. Yeah. No kidding. Ely just in the background in blue. Here's the bay, all time important break. Side pocket, he made a ball. Yeah, he's really crunching the break. And see how he's, he's never been known as having a, a cannon for a break, he but he's hitting these pretty good. Eight, but he's got a strong break. How come you think he won all them eight ball world titles, <laughs> Jim? It's not gonna happen without a break, didn't I tell you that much. Didn't win it without a powder puff, puff break, did no, he? No, you need, you need. You think of the, the big breaks in the, that have been in the game, though. I mean, Bustamante comes to mind, certainly Shane right now. If anyone's got a better break than Shane, I don't know them. Well, I'll tell you one who, who breaks really, maybe even too hard, has Petri Makunen in the match before. It was almost like, like he broke the balls. <laughs> like it was getting harder and harder, and it's like, so that's why I was wondering if we can get a speed gun on this TV main table to see how really how hard they break. Ralph is twist. It's a question about the... Hmm? Question about shot clock. John Lehman is there. Yeah, just wants to get the shot clock timing straight. Okay. That was a conversation with referee John Lehman. He's the ref on this match, happens to be the head official as well. So. Just getting the timing straight, and, and again, that's that's Ralph Suke to a T. He just wants to know exactly where everything stands. Yeah. So there's no everything mistakes. in right order. Exactly. Yeah, perfection. Yep, yeah. That, that's him. And there's our referee, John Lehman. Ralph had just heard uh, two 
different warnings, a 10 second warning and a 15 second warning. Mm -hmm. He just wanted it crystal clear in his mind. And he wanted to save that extension. He didn't want to use the extension really, but I think the show clock confused him. That's why he used it. Somebody said 10, but it was 15 left. Or something. That's what he was referring to. Well, for the three ball corner. Spin it down for the four, seven on the bottom cushion. Again, this is. Are you surprised now he has, he has run 28 racks? <laughs> well, I'm, starting to, <laughs> I'm starting to believe it now. <laughs> Well, maybe heard me laugh. Stay quiet. He's been around me for years. He knows. He knows your laugh, yeah. Marcus. Oh, he'll be sick about that. If he can shoot the seven, now he's gonna make it tougher. All rail first on the six. Yeah, intended playing the cue ball into that 15 and just narrowly missed it. So did he use his extension or did he got it back from John? And I think he was given the extension back. Okay, yeah. now he uses now it. He's using it. Well, is he going to try and spin this off the cushion? So you see how important that is? He didn't want to use the extension without needing to. Now he needs that extension from earlier when when he got oh given no, back he's, he's playing this one down the cushion. He's put the extension back and nice shot. Uh, where's the eight ball gone though? Where has the eight ball gone? Does it go in the side? Surely it doesn't go in the corner. I can see it from here. He better he better land just perfect on that eight. Where he's pointing right there, you know, uh, high. He's got to get right back on a line in the middle of the table. Oh. Is that this enough? is close. This is close. I think he got there, though. Oh, I'm not too sure. He's going to be spinning this. I'll tell you, the ref's going to be front and center. Well, he wants he's, the referee to yeah, look at Yeah, he's it. telling the ref to get over there. John Lehman is right behind. He's been in nicely. Yeah. What a shot. What a nice out that dash. one from Suke. That was close. But I'll tell you what, there wasn't a lot of room. He had to get that cue ball right back to the middle of the table. And forced to make a good shot on the seven. That was a that was a terrific out, Marcus. Yeah, yeah. He fell out of line there and he recovered nicely. That's five racks in a row. And Ralph breaking. He's in front. There's Karim's two little mm -hmm. girls. Family. I heard he dropped his wallet last night. <laughs> <laughs> Karim <laughs> Belhaj, CEO of Predator. And one of the architects of this terrific event. And what a, a billiard expo it's been. We had the Medallia Light Puerto Rico Open. 10 ball championships, men and women. We've got the World Junior nine ball championships going on. We've got the CSI Caribbean championships going on. And then to cap it all off, the Predator World eight ball. And it's even gonna get bigger next year. More teams and, and amateurs. This event probably gonna grow. Nine coming. days we get to spend here and we don't get to put the suntan lotion on once. <laughs> okay, stolen. Break might be dry. I think it is five oh. racks. He ran a dry break from Conrad and a five rack by Ralph would put him in the lead. Unfortunately, and it's put some pressure back on Conrad's shoulders. He has spent a good deal of time in that comfortable chair. Mm -hmm. Tell you what. Conrad is that kind of player that he can run the set out from here. 
obviously. You know, and you, you think about losing a match like this, even from Suke's perspective. He might have missed a ball early in the match that Conrad ran for. Now Ralph has run five in a row mm -hmm. and a dry break. And if you go back and and say, well, you know, unlucky, Ralph. Well, I guess, yeah, very unlucky. All he did is break dry mm -hmm. and yeah. it cost him the match. He didn't break bad. It was just... yeah. That's why I'm saying, if you're going to win this event, you better bring that break. If you don't have a break, you'll be hunted down quickly by mm. somebody with a better break. Yeah, true enough, Marcus. He's the best players in the world. I mean, for people to think that it's easy to go around the world and win tournaments, it's a walk in the park, then you better tune into this and watch best players in the world run out here and this match is just one of the matches yeah like I said imagine you've, you've hooked a very good European player in the second round and there were 128 players that started it out so in the last 64 here's your matchup guy that can run racks just like you and like you're saying he's one of many they're better they're younger and just because you don't recognize their names, that means nothing. Conrad with a nice. Yeah, he's got the one, and then the three on the same cushion is the eight. So nothing short of a glaring mistake. It's going to stop us from going 5-5. Five, five. Watch out. Conrad is. Conrad's got nice patterns as well in eight ball. You can tell he comes around the angle as well. This long eight ball. Shouldn't be a problem for him. To go ahead and tie this match as five apiece. In a high class match. High level. Down goes the eight ball. Well, right now I can't pick a winner in this match. It all depends on the break. Yeah. Neither player looks like they're gonna miss anything. Anything easy anyways. But you never know. Here's a look at Conrad. John Lehman, one of the, <laughs> like Mark said, one of the most famous ba famous back in the world. <laughs> 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 you only see his back. <laughs> they should make a statue of him, him racking the balls. <laughs> Put him in Amsterdam billiards. Trying to ensure these players get a good tight rack. Conrad with the break. I think he came up dry one br one time, I think. Or was it two? I think twice. Open hand bridge. I think he's going to come up dry again. Took some speed off there. And that's going to cost him, I think. You, you see, he broke with open hand trying to make that one in the side. Didn't. Took a gamble and then he left open table for Ralph. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Ralph Suke has been breaking better. If Ralph can get out here and maintain that one rack advantage, he's going to be a huge favorite because he'll be breaking. But he's got to get out here. Your mindset on the break in this tournament, I think, should be you're going to go head on with force, thinking that if you don't make a good break, you might as well fly the table because it's just, I think, in my opinion, it's just the same thing. 99 out of 100 times, your opponent's going to have a shot if you don't make a ball. Pretty much. 
Yeah, I can see Ralph making the nine here, and he'll leave that 15. For me, he might leave that 15 till the very end because that is the perfect ball to drop onto the eight. <coughs> All remaining stripes in the middle of the table apart from that 15, nicely positioned that he can pick them off. But he just slightly wayward on the positional end. So just taking the extension to resettle himself because he needs to get that cue ball back under control. Watch out. Oh, he's fine. Perfect. Twelve ball on the side. He can play the twelve, eleven, fifteen, then Ten for last if he wants. I guess it's just personal preference at this moment. His last four balls. Stretching a bit. the temple yeah, and just draw lap draw back slightly and try and get pretty straight on that 15 and then a stop shot for the eight beautiful Yeah, when you select the balls in the right order, you definitely make your work easy. And 6-5, Ralph Suke with the break. And it wouldn't surprise me if he ran out the match. He doesn't look like missing, I'll tell you that much. It's just a matter of him making balls in the break. Patterns around is playing eight ball is just world class. Cuba control, second to none. Conrad can only sit and wait. Hope that a dry break will get him out of his chair. You certainly don't look like getting an unforced error from Suke. You've had one. You really can't see another one coming. I don't think Rob would take some speed off like Conrad did. Six to five. He needs two more games in order for him to win this, this match. Lost the cube a little bit. Made a ball, look. ah, dry. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Not Q the best break, he lost, he almost scratched there. Yeah, cue ball almost went in and that was kicked and, and then the 12 didn't quite find gravity in that top right corner, so. What can Conrad conjure up here? Nothing really super easy op in an open shot here. What is he going to play? The combination? Oh, nice. 
nice shot. Nice open shot from Conrad. Huh? Yeah, he had to have it too. And then he removed at 14. A low percentage shot. He knocked it in and all of a sudden. He's got a position that uh, looks very inviting. He wants to try to get on the 15. Yeah, he's put his hand there. That's where he wants to be. So he's got a window in between the one and the nine. He, he got there. Mm -hmm. Wanted to travel a bit further. <laughs> Yeah, he's not making life easy now. Don't know if he can avoid contacting the one, possibly. This is a big shot. I think he wanted to be able to get down table to attack either the 11 into the side or the 14 in the corner. Even stretching this can't be easy. Mm, my shot, he used the one to come down. I wonder if he's on this. What is it, the temple down there? No, 14. Yeah. Nice out from Conrad. The only thing that can stop him from here is the scratch in the side by the cue ball. Or leave him too much distance on the on the eight ball. Nicely done. Yeah. Six six. We've played twelve racks and nothing in it and. Marcus, what better time to take a quick break? We'll be right back. Conrad, musician from Poland, and Ralph Suke have really treated us to a high quality battle here. 6-6, six, six. a race to eight, effectively now a two out of three. Nothing. Yep. The mystery of the break as yet unsolved. Feels like, almost like both players knows that the, they're like little tense when they break off. You know they know how important it is. And it's like the level of the way they hit the, the the break has gone down a bit. I think, in my opinion, no easy starting ball here for Suke. That's the only good news that Conrad can take away from the table. My play safety. Squeeze the cube behind the four. Just on top of the four. See? Conrad 
let's see what he tries to do here. You don't like it? Glued that cue ball to the end cushion right by the diamond. And I don't know if he's left off anything at all. Well, there's no safety here, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I know. It's just a question, what, does he have the five there or does he have the 10 in the side? Or 12 in the corner, does it pass? He's shooting at the 10, I think. 10 in the side. Oh, that was tough. It was narrow, uh, Jim. It was a good shot Conrad played. Yeah. Jacked Fro up. Frozen on the rail, yeah. yeah. Spinning that cue ball. You're right, Jim, good call. I mean, once you, once you plan that, that cue ball frozen on the rail, it makes everything so tough. And, and he knew getting it to the middle diamond, he wasn't leaving any one of these to the bottom left corner. It was a really good shot he played, and it's bottom a chance. That might be the, the match winning shot. Time will tell. What if he's going to play the 14 here, leave himself for the 15 after? He's playing the three. That two ball, that cue ball just bumped, that presents a bit of a problem as well. Doesn't go to either corner pocket. Well, as Conrad starts to see the finish line coming into view too. You know, anxiety starts to settle in. The nerves start to become a factor. I'm wondering if the two passes though, uh, Jim, in that corner pocket. I don't think so. I think that two's a problem ball. Mm -hmm. Pass. I mean, as the speed is playing around, it's like it goes. I see he now he started point. He's going to try and drop right in behind it from the five. Goes to the top left corner. Wow. Now, where do you want to play the eight? Well, he needs to high his stick and play, leave the cue ball underneath. He needs to come with a good shot here. I'll tell you how much. Jim. See, elevate his cue. Oh, made it. Good shot. And stayed below the eight to the same pocket. I thought he overcut it first. That was nice. Big, big shot here. Eight ball is down. Wow, nice what shot. a finish. Whoa. Conrad Musician to the hill. 7-6 ahead of Ralph Souquet. And what a clearance that was. Yeah, it was good. He was playing so fast. And I was thinking, does he know he have, there's no pocket for the two? You know, Then he landed underneath it like he was walking the park. Two really good shots from him. And a chance to win the match with a good break. And Suke can only hope that he gets to the table. The last few breaks have been dry from both players. Yeah. So let's see. Big break coming up. Conrad. Let's 
deciding match. Yes, and he'll be very anxious. Go to the corner. <laughs> Where do you break from? Yeah, what is he it? tried just about everywhere. He was looking at the side rail. He went. He noticed it. Nope. I'm going out with guns. So this break. He needs just one ball to dictate this back. Uh, this match. Made a ball on the side. Almost crashed with the cue ball. Oh, this is nice. Almost forced to take stripes yeah. just because of what happened in the bottom right corner. But the stripes are there. They're all there. Yeah, almost straight into the side pocket with the cue ball. Now the only ball that he needs to work with is the nine. He needs to get underneath and shoot it in the side pocket, uh, Jim. Surely, surely he's going to shoot the strikes, but two, the two doesn't go. Might remove, remove the nine from here. Uh, you don't want to move balls if, if you don't have to. Temple next. It's got to be and then play that nine in the side. Get rid of the problem ball right away. But not over the three. There you oh, go, stop just in time. Konrad from Poland. He's about to take down one of the big guns. Maestro Ralph Suke. Thirteen goes in the side, Jim. It's close, isn't it? If he does, very close. Yeah. He might come up for the fourteen now, and then end with the thirteen. Perfect. Look at this for a shot, Jim. It's like placing it with ball in hand. What has he got running in his veins? No nerves. <laughs> Some Polish vodka, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the eight passes the two, and it looks like it does, Ralph Suke is going to have to fight his way back from the loser's bracket. Nice out, and he don't waste any time. What a big run of blow for these guys, putting on an amazing match. A quality oh. performance from Conrad nice Musician. Lead. Fully yeah, deserving yeah. of the win. 8 6. He beats Ralph Suke. What a nice game. What a nice game. And it was a terrific match, as you said, Marcus. And for Jim Weich, Marcus Shamat, hope you enjoyed it. There's going to be lots of eight ball action still to come. Hope you join us.